Hello, everybody, and welcome to Skywatch Television. I'm Joe Artis Horn. Today, we have a very special program for you, and a very special thank you to all of our viewers and our supporters, who without them, we wouldn't be here. I'm telling you, this year has been a really difficult battle. We're going to get into some of that in just a minute. But before we go any further, ladies and gentlemen, thank you to the people that fight with us <laughs> yes. to keep us here. Exactly. Yes. 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 Before we dive into the subject material today that we hope to cover in what is probably not going to be enough time, I'm joined in the studio today by Skywatch TV's head of HR, Sharice Parton, founder of Whispering Ponies Ranch, Nita Horn, and my beautiful wife, Catherine Horn, my oldest daughter and animal encounter specialist at Whispering Ponies Ranch, Kate Horn, and of course, powerful voice in Christian ministry, Donna Howell. So I just want to tell you, my Skywatch family, from the bottom of my heart, especially this year, mm -hmm. we are not permitted to talk about every difficulty that right. we're experiencing right. as a ministry. Some of yeah. it is legalistic, and I just don't want to get into the weeds of it. Some of it I'm not permitted to speak about. Take my word for this, and trust me when I tell you, when my father passed away 10 months ago last October, at the time of this recording, it was as if the gates of hell recognized that there was a moment in time where we've lost our champion. Mm -hmm. That includes Defender Publishing, Skywatch TV, the visionary that dreamed all of this up. Yeah. Yeah. And he saw a giant gaping hole in administration, yeah. Yeah. in leadership. The guy that always knew what to do next. <laughs> the one who had the plan, the one that we blindly followed for more than two decades. <laughs> and the gates of hell began mm -hmm. to swarm all of the ministries at one time yeah. Yeah. so many ways there were days i literally said it's almost like somebody is writing an ironic comedy no exactly every lever that we strategically met about as a board as a ministry every effort every strategy to deal with the economic dilemmas and some of the challenges that were being hurled at us in almost like a nuclear holocaust battle type warfare yeah. Every strategy, right at the moment of reveal, or right at the moment of release, right at the moment where we're going to push back. A new gopher pops a, up. A new gopher would pop up. It was like playing whack-a-mole. That, yeah. That's the understatement yeah. of the year. And again, I, I don't want to get into the layers and layers and layers, but this really was like a year where we felt like we were Jericho. <laughs> the enemy is marching around the walls. They're waiting for us to collapse. We've had um, betrayals. We've had people hoping for our demise. Absolutely. We've had yeah. people beginning online onslaughts. We've been canceled. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to put up some screenshots because some of the efforts to cancel us are literally unbelievable, right. in my view, unless I produce the proof to you. We've had every one of our send a kid to camp programs right. or yeah. minister to a foster child, everything we The most done. vanilla posts. Exactly. The most vanilla, benign, yeah. just right. good-natured posts. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Some of them retroactively yeah. removed by big yep. tech. Yep. Mm -hmm. Two years after they've been posted. It was, like, it was like every spirit behind every big platform yeah. said, let's go back and retroactively yeah. delete this ministry because mm -hmm. what they're doing yeah. absolutely infuriates the spirits behind what's guiding this. Quite apparently. Yeah. This and also so happened in our personal uh, space too. Our personal space. Not just our uh, Skywatch space. How many times, Cherise, have I said this year, if I told people the depths of what we're dealing with, they would just think I'm making it up. No, absolutely. Which is one of the reasons I've decided not to go into Fictional. detail. It's there's just no way. Total fiction. Right? No way. <laughs> but I'm telling you, my, my sweet champion father passes away, and it was like the gates of hell said, now is the time. Yeah. Yep. And I mean, we've just been battered and battered and battered. But here's the deal. <laughs> the enemy would love to take credit absolutely. for the demise of ministries like this. <laughs> but as we've continued to pray and as you, the viewers, have continued to support us financially yeah. and more importantly, prayerfully, prayer, yeah. I'm yeah. here to tell you that Skywatch is seeing some victories yes. now yep. and the landscape looks very optimistic yeah. now. And what God has done in not spite of this year, but because of what right. we're now calling the great rearranging of 2024 <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. The things that he's enabled us to do as a ministry, which we're going to get into in just a minute, required that we take a pause mm -hmm. and take a week of network television to appraise you of some of the amazing miracles that God has right. stepped in yeah. and robustly commanded that they happen. Yes. Does that make sense? I call it the, the great rearranging of 2024 because here's what life has felt like. Like an ant farm that <laughs> yes. has all of its pathways figured mm -hmm. out and they know where the queen is and they've got a system and the, the economy's... Oh, <laughs> it's all, it's all, it's all we sorted. Yeah, source. we got our food sources, everything. <laughs> and somebody goes like this. <laughs> <laughs> two-year-old. And now you got a bunch of buried ants <laughs> looking for the queen. One of the cancellations was right before my father's summoning the demon book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right as... Yeah. YouTube was beginning to be raucous again, yeah. and we were hitting you know over a hundred thousand subscribers, and our videos were getting a million, million seven mm -hmm. views, yeah. etc. Yeah, Carl Gallup's and Zev Porat are going viral as soon as that happens. Yep. yep. Bing, delete, <laughs> and it's the standard. You go to appeal, and you get an automated message that mm -hmm. you've gone against terms and policies. I can't even tell you how devastating that was for the release of my father's book. So again, every lever this year. Right. Yeah. Well, hang on, boys. This is coming. Yeah. Hang on, fellas. Here we go. Then, right as we are about to begin walking out what is the calling of most of us, here, yeah. Yeah. the heartbeat of this ministry, we're, mm. we're, we're, we're on the precipice of walking out our treasured summer yeah. camps at Whispering Ponies Ranch. Part of what we do. Yeah. We've got That's people mowing do. the lawns. We've actually been executing all of the pre-training. Yeah. My wife's doing the food service. If you missed this, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, we talk about this at length. Uh, about a month ago, we put yeah. out a video talking about the insurance dilemma of yeah. 2024. And, and we tell the long version. So please go back to the, the archives. I'm just going to refresh the viewers that may have missed this today. But right ahead of our summer camps, John Batchelder's come out. We've yeah. recertified the zip line. She's the cooking. Wall. Yeah, she's cooking for the guest administrators that are here training. With the archery. Yeah, we built a brand new archery system yeah. for the kids this year yeah. because it was one of the things right. they had asked for last year. Yeah. We are ready to go, and we're saying in the in the midst of yeah. this year, <laughs> hang in there, fellas. Right. Summer's, Summer's coming. coming. <laughs> it's going to feed our souls. <laughs> Just we're, we're we're close, right? We're so mm -hmm. close. And roughly a month before the first camp is to set foot on our campgrounds, our insurance of over a decade lets us know that they're canceling our plan. Yeah, they're just not going to renew us this year. They're just not going to renew. Yeah. Now, of course, if you don't know anything about camping, 30 days is not enough time at all going into June to find yeah. campgrounds, to find locations that can put you in because right. they've already right. booked for the summer. Oh, right. for sure. Well, so, most people book a year or so in advance yeah. because right. they have such a big need for that. But that was one of the first robust miracles that God commanded to happen. Yes. And that he busted through barrier after barrier after barrier. And all, by the way, of the camps that were supposed to be at Whispering Ponies Ranch, with the exception of one, right. found locations Which, yeah. and had camp anyway. Another thing, if you missed the update a month ago where we talked about this at length, and I'm just going to hit this very quickly because we've got a lot of material to cover today, was because we were unable to facilitate uh, rehabilitation camps for the children of Whispering Ponies Ranch and Royal Family Kids, which if you're unfamiliar is where they come for rest, rehabilitation. Yeah. These are children that are wards of the state. Mm -hmm. Many of them are in foster care. They've been abused in every possible way. There's plenty of programs out there if you want to look up what we do at Whispering Ponies Ranch and the mm -hmm. kids that we serve, the ones that we stand in the gap for. Those children were served at other campgrounds. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it gave our family an opportunity. Here's another miracle. Yeah. For the first time in over 20 years, my family got to serve. We stepped in as volunteers. And by the way, um, we have staff here today. Ashley, Dustin mm -hmm. yeah. Woodker. Yeah. Literally made arrangements so that their kids were taken exactly. care of. They stepped into the, they stepped into the battlefield yep. and with went us. with our family. Yeah to locations mm -hmm. in Arkansas and, and yeah. elsewhere throughout the Midwest to go now be volunteer counselors. Yep. We were able to, another miracle, get last minute training through Emily Akers, yeah. mm -hmm. who put yeah. us through the training. And we served as counselors, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is different from the way we serve at Whispering Ponies oh, Ranch. Completely. Very completely quick snapshot. Different. Historically at Whispering Ponies Ranch, we have the opportunity to run the facilities. We're cleaning the restrooms. Yeah. We're facilitating the Rec, zip line and the ropes course, et cetera. Service. 
but we are not able to serve the children 24 hours a day. That's right. the job of the counselor, right. Right. historically. Right. So if a child begins to have a nuclear meltdown, mm -hmm. we step back and the trained counselors right. step in. Do you see what right. I'm getting Absolutely. at? So this is the most generic, broadside, quick drive-by <laughs> version of this I can give you for the sake of time today, but we were able to serve 24 seven as counselors. One of my favorite coordinators, Will Johnson told me a couple of weeks ago, he coordinates every year, he's been doing it, I think almost 20 or over 20 years now. He said yeah. that it takes six months for most of their counselors to step up and recommit for the following year because of the emotional toll that that 24 right. hours a day for an entire solid week with troubled children, right, right. the toll that that takes on them. Yeah, I am so true. proud to tell you that my oldest two daughters, one of whom is here today, <laughs> Kate Horn, did four consecutive weeks of that <laughs> without reprieve, say for part of, let's say, a Saturday in between camps when right. they're resetting. Roll over, yeah. She's in Arkansas. She's back over at Camp Eagle Rock in Missouri. Both of my daughters served weeks on end of these camps. And also, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that my nephew, John, who also works behind the scenes here at Skywatch TV, stepped up did an entire week as a counselor, and he will tell you firsthand that the toll of dealing with some of the children we're there to serve is, is really difficult. Yeah. It really takes a lot out of you, but it was a treasure for us. God has showed us more than I could ever, ever, ever dilute Lots into one week of broadcast. Yeah. yeah. God has also used this great rearranging to enable me to do some things that I would not have been able to do this year were we running camps in the usual way right. at Whispering Ponies Ranch? Yeah. I was invited to speak by Mike Spaulding at the Go Therefore conference. It's one of the best RAN conferences mm -hmm. I've ever been to. And believe me, yeah. under the tutelage of my father, right. uh, it's countless years of conference, conference, conference. So I'm telling yeah. you, Mike Spaulding and his team, Neil, the pastor of the church that they held this event at, the, these were just fabulous professionals, mm -hmm. very yeah. organized. And I was blessed to be there. I chose to speak on the subject of children that we serve at Whispering Ponies Ranch, the mm -hmm. victims of the foster care system, and I'm gonna collapse because it's, it's, it's too much for today's program to get into, but I will tell you that, that being able to speak was cathartic for me. Good. Felt mm -hmm. like I got a lot off my chest. Yeah. It was a very emotional presentation. Um, you can still go to, at the time of this recording, to the Go Therefore conference uh, online and we'll put it up at the bottom of your screen if you wanna. Derek Gilbert, if you wanna watch these presentations, absolutely yeah. killed it on the secret history of Israel. Yeah. Parts of it I had never heard of in my life. Yeah. Fabulous conference. But after I spoke on the ways that the governmentally ran systems for children, the child advocate systems that they have in place, the blind spots and how they allow for multiple abusers to take advantage of these blind spots right. and how these children right. end up abused, over and over and over and over and over again, and how many of them don't survive the system. I had three women at different times come up to me and tell me it was the first time in their life that somebody had stepped into a church to talk about essentially what was their childhood. Yeah. Wow. And for them, it was a cathartic moment of not only validation, right. but healing. Right, absolutely. Uh, and that's an oversimplification. One man came up to me and had to leave the presentation, told me it triggered him. <laughs> Right. Wow. And at first I thought he was complaining or that he was upset at me. But we discovered that he was dealing with unresolved issues with his father. Wow. Yeah. And me and a man that I had just met named Jason, we, we had just barely made introductions, ended up leading this man through a deliverance prayer. Yeah. yeah. This was the year of 2024. Yeah. The enemy tried <laughs> to spike the football and God said, no, I don't think so. Not so fast. We're going to pull off some haymakers here. I want to open this up to the panel now and get you guys in on this because I'm bursting at the seams and I know that you are as well. Kate, what was some of the things that you saw God do this year that would not have happened if we had ran a historical precedent year? This was obviously a very, very different year. Um, usually I am the animal manager, so whenever I um, am around the kids, my interactions are very minimal. Most of the time they're just, you know, explaining certain silly questions about a goat or a horse. <laughs> so um, I technically have some years of experience doing uh, RFK through Whispering Ponies, sure. but this was definitely an incredible perspective to get being a counselor. Um, I was a counselor for um, two weeks with two different groups. It was a great learning experience for me in so many ways. 
I had to work on myself a little bit during these weeks. It was a different experience altogether because uh, I can be a little bit stoic. Um, I had to definitely step out of my comfort zone For to sure. try and uh, interact with the kids. And mm-hmm. one of my main goals was that I just wanted to be encouraging to everyone. Mm-hmm. And so one of my one of my favorite moments during camp, I actually ended up doing people's hair a lot during <laughs> camp. And if you don't Love know this. me, I'm also not like the biggest girly girl. <laughs> and so, um, and so, um, I was. So she I, learned to braid. <laughs> yes, I did a lot of braiding, but then I actually kind of. Got good at it, but also I do braid the horse's hair, so that's about the only oh, braiding no. experience that I have. That experience braiding the horse's yeah. hair. Yeah, pays off. She just applied it, just it to the little kids. Yeah, right, Hi. right. It was very different, but I actually I made it work. Um, but then you know I had this one girl during my first week. It was a pretty pretty cute little hairstyle. It was like two little space buns, and she gave me like she braided my bangs and a bunch of little braids. So I got tons of compliments, and then I was trying to you know encourage her and say, hey, this is actually amazing hair you know you could be a hairstylist right. whenever you grow up or whatever and then the, uh, the other girls they would be complimenting my hair and I'd be like thanks Aubrey did it <laughs> oh, no, and um <laughs> so yeah I I stepped out of my comfort zone a lot and I embraced a lot of the girly girl side to she, myself you, you because you yeah because at the tea party I was in a dress which I hardly <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah and yeah and the dress what's kind of funny is that the original dress that I had picked for the tea party because the counselors picked like a super plain like black dress and then whenever I went to put it on it actually didn't fit and so then <laughs> the girls they wanted to pick my dress and they picked like the the most poofiest, <laughs> most girly, like ridiculous dress ever. I put it on and it was actually one of my favorite parts was to be in this ridiculously poofy dress with the girls and like, I want to see you twirl in it. And so I was twirling, <laughs> acting like a princess and being all proper. And so one of, one of the things, if you don't know what she's describing is they do a tea party at every one of these royal family mm-hmm. kids camps where these abused girls have come in and they've only ever been told that they have no value. Right, Many yeah. of them have been sexually violated or right, assaulted yep. or Abuse, neglected, or their hands have been held on stovetops for disciplinary measures. These these kids have been whipped with bicycle chains and locked in dog cages. <laughs> so having someone yeah. pamper their hair, mm-hmm. right. getting to wear a dress, and by the way, very quick update for those of you that don't know, we used to do these tea parties where the girls would pick out a dress and then they would put the dress back so the girls the following year could take their pick of dress, but it's it's alone. Right. And then they're washed and, and replaced. This year, because of the response of our viewers that said, hey, we want to send dresses. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're sending these girls home now they get to with the it. dress of their choice. Oh, they're yes. loving it. That's they have the so matter. many dresses, they get to keep them. Yeah. yeah. Kate is an absolute animal lover, all species, a cute little reptile. I'm like, yeah, it's a reptile, I don't want to touch the reptile. (laughs) She just sees beauty in every one of God's creations. This little girl sees a daddy long leg and is by default gonna kill this thing. She's running up, she's got her knee up, she's about to stomp, (laughs) and Kate goes, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 don't kill it, why? And she goes, I'm scared of it. And she goes, "You you should never just kill something because you don't understand it, watch this. Kate picks this thing up and there are four or five girls. Now she's got an audience. Oh, oh my gosh, look at Kate. She's holding a spider and it's crawling at her. <laughs> now they're moving in closer and closer. Can I touch it? <laughs> anyway, long story short, this little girl that five minutes before was just going to kill this dead long leg is now holding it. Oh, wow. And there's a line of girls that want their turn holding the daddy long leg. They held this poor daddy long leg until you could tell it was like tired of trying to get away. <laughs> Kate's finally like, we probably should let him go. He's probably tired. Anyway, that was a huge highlight for me as a dad to get to see her take this moment of fear and turn it into, you know. And of course, we told the little girl, never ever play with spiders that you don't know about. Right, right. right. You know, make sure that you're with an adult like Kate who can tell you which ones are the safe ones. But anyway, (laughs) what are some of the things, Nita, that you saw this year that you think God allowed to happen because of the rearranging? Well, I think one of the things that uh, that is most important, two things, one, is that we were, as a family, able to interact on the other perspective. Mm -hmm. And I think that has been a game changer for me Mm -hmm. because, like Kate said, as a facilitator and a host of the ranch, our our interaction is limited because we do not want to take away from why that counselor is there. Right. Right. But because we got to do those things, we got to interact and get to know these little children in a little bit different way. And I think that was very good for us to see that because we see it for other people, but to experience it ourselves. Right. Right. 
going to make Fridays a lot harder. Just <laughs> oh, saying. wow. You know? yeah. I would like to uh, give a, a huge uh, shout out to Dave and Angela Dumas out of Johnson, Arkansas, mm -hmm. because they started out at the ranch. Mm -hmm. And so they had never had to go out and itinerate or try to do a lot of fundraising because a lot of it is provided by our sponsors right. out right, there. Right, right. And, and it's <clears> what <throat> we're able to do as hosts is to allow them to come to, at not, no cost. Right. Makes it easy for them, but then when this all happened, the, the beautiful thing about it is that Angela and David would not take no for an answer. They right. fought hard. They fought did. Hard. They got right. out there. They fought. They were on Facebook. They were, they were social media. They were everywhere. They and, visited churches. And they did. Oh, wow. They visited 17 different churches in their community. And so wow. that whole valley wow. yeah. now knows about Royal Family, Whispering Ponies Ranch, yeah. and these kids. Yeah. And so yay for that. So to me, that was a treasure. Joe, there's one more thing that I'd like you to uh, t tell, tell about Zach. Oh. We got to see Zach the other day. Yeah, we got to talk to you about Zach for a minute. So Zach is just one example of what we're seeing now as we've entered into what would have been our fifth year now of camp at Whispering Ponies Ranch. Some of these little kids have started off their first year of camp through Royal Family Kids happened at Whispering Ponies Ranch. This was their inaugural year. They'd never seen anything like it. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we tell them, I've started really using this as the years have gone by because I've seen it as an effective motivator on Fridays. Yeah. Fridays is always hard because the kids are leaving and they don't know if they're ever going to get to come back to Whispering Ponies right. Ranch. Well, and especially the graduates. Yeah, yeah, the graduates, when they graduate out of the program, are, are, are terrified. They're not going to be yeah. able to come back to the happiest place on earth for them ever again. Mm -hmm. exactly. So one of the ways that I've started encouraging them, and now it's become infectious, is I'll say, you know what the secret to coming back is, right? And they'll look at me like, there's a secret? <laughs> I've even had them say, there's a secret to yeah. coming back forever? <laughs> said, yeah, there's a secret to coming back forever. And they'll, yeah. What is it? And I'll say, you have to become a counselor. <gasps> it, it, I, I can't even tell you the story right. this year. Counselor Dale, mm -hmm. this kid found his identity mm -hmm. That's awesome. this year. Literally, of... almost required that I refer to him as Counselor Dale. Yeah. Yeah. He was referring to himself, Donna, in the third Aww. person. Uncle Joe, did you see what Counselor Dale just yes, did with that football <laughs> <stress? Like, laughs> His he new did. identity is Counselor yeah. Dale. He is so at, we did, a, we did a fist bump and made a pact. That Counselor Dale is going to come back right. someday yeah. as a junior counselor. This is his That's future. This cool. is what he wants. Yeah. Anyway, so Zach is living proof that that has started to work. Right. Zach Absolutely. has now aged out of the Royal Family Kids program and is back this year mm -hmm. as a junior counselor. Yes. Yes. So for me this year, you know, you guys got to go have fun and go play <laughs> with camps, you know, and administratively I'm back here taking care of all the things that we take care of. And, and thankfully, you know, all of the things that we have been, the birthing process this year that we've gone through, basically, the staff really has come together as a collective and they have been so resilient and we have had challenge after challenge after challenge and nobody does an Eeyore Nobody, wah, wah. They, everybody's just, what, what can I do? What can I do? Yeah, what right. needs yeah. done? Exactly. And it's just getting done. And, you know, we have really been able to, from an, an administrative perspective, really look at some things that we didn't, you know, necessarily have tightened like we should have. So we got the opportunity to really hone in on that. Right. And, it, it, and for me, that's just, it's, it's protection, especially in light of all the issues we're having with insurance anyway. Right. right. So, right. you know, for it's me. it's made us button things down oh, even absolutely. tighter to absolutely. keep everything the And we've way not had any to. lashback from anybody, you right. know, any company that we, we deal with, you know, because we've had to do procedures outside of our companies, companies that we deal with. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, so so it's, all this outward pressure has helped us to see things it, and do them better. It really has, you know, yeah. a different perspective. And instead of it being a constant negative, you know, what's the positive I can learn from today? What's the what's positive? The lesson? What can I, yeah, because I hate taking tests. Yeah. I wasn't a <laughs> test taker in school. Right. I want to learn the lesson the first time. I don't want to keep going around the mountain. So it's like, what's the lesson in this? Right. Let me see it. You know, right. my staff, the, the, there's critical ones that we all have to powwow. And, you know, I have a wheelhouse. They have a wheelhouse. Collectively, let's get right. together and just absolutely obliterate whatever the problem is. Mm -hmm. And we have been able to keep some things at bay. There's still some things that are very challenging that we're walking through, right, right. but our head's high. Mm -hmm. I can't get into the details because it would take an hour. But basically mm -hmm. what we're finding out through all of these underwriters is that the current economic and insurance drivers 
w what, what's happened is that tons of church camps and yeah. churches, anything resembling what we Ministry. do, mass, yeah. mass cancellations yeah. from the yeah. industry as a whole, yes. which has done yep. two things. One, now it's created a massive backlog of people yep. that are all looking for the same types of insurance, exactly. which has now done the second thing, which is inundated underwriters to almost the point of tap out. Well, and yeah. to the point that they've got the opportunity and the luxury of being able to cherry pick, whereas mm -hmm. before yeah. they yeah. just needed the business. Nobody's and hungry. boost prices. Nobody's yeah. hungry for policy. We are, we're like at the DMV. We have number 580 Hold and they're the on six. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's just, exactly yeah, what exactly. it is. So ladies block. and gentlemen, if you want to continue to pray for this right. ministry, we cherish those prayers like for you can't sure. believe. Yes, we talk as a staff so yeah. much about how we feel the yeah. love and right. the support and the yes, phone calls right. and the emails from our Skywatch family. And I'm just telling you, under the current situation, the state of the economy and everything else with book participations everything. and everything, Yes. The reason that Skywatch TV is still here fighting and the reason that we're still underwriting child advocate efforts is yeah. because of your prayer and your support. Yeah. If you want to continue that support, you can absolutely do that prayerfully. Lift us up, lift our team up, yes. lift the children up that we're yes. trying to reach, that God would absolutely. use us to stand in the gap for as many of them as humanly possible, that will also inspire others to raise up an army of doing the same types of work for children. You can also support us financially if you feel led to do that by visiting skywatchtv.com. There's a donate link at the top. There's different opportunities for you to mm -hmm. support not only Skywatch TV, the ministry, which is essential right. to the survival of Whispering Cove Critical. Ranch, but you can also support the ranch yeah. directly. You can also download our mobile app at the App Store. Look for the Skywatch TV mobile app. You can donate directly there. Yeah. Friends, this is so easy. This can be set up as a monthly automated right. uh, donation. We have people that are doing it as their form of tithe right. because they love the Lord but don't attend a local church. Right. We would also encourage you for reasons not having anything to do with the financial support of either of these ministries by downloading the mobile app because it's the one place right now that we can't be canceled. Exactly. Right. Right. So right. many place. emails That's this year, right. people saying, where'd you go? We right. thought you yeah. shut the ministry down. Yep. No, no, no. Yep. Big tech has deleted mm -hmm. us yeah. everywhere right. we go, with the exception, and I'm holding my breath a little bit, our content is we're, we're buying the premium account at X. So we're able to put our entire episodes, this will be there. And right now they're not censoring. Right. So I can say the things that I need to say about child advocacy without right. algorithms deleting us because we're standing in the gap right. um, for wounded children. So finally, from our hearts to yours, our Skywatch family, thank you so much for lifting us up in prayer and support. We love you. We wouldn't be here without you. For everybody here in studio, for everybody on panel, ladies, thank you for joining us today. I'm Joe Artis Horn. Keep your eyes on the prize, which is Jesus Christ. We'll be back. Thank you.